uh, what's this presentation about? Luckily, we had quite a few similar talks, like GF had something about how to solve, how to deal with complexities, because we all deal with complexities. What kind of complexities we are dealing with? We try to produce a complex, extremely complex software, right? In the past, it wasn't like this. But these days, almost every single product has a piece of software in it. And it's becoming more and more complex, sometimes extremely complex. And furthermore, an extremely complex organization produces it, right? I used to work at Ericsson. We were 650 working on a single project. Five sites, four countries, two time zones. And the whole solution was developed by 12,000 people. And we still need to produce good quality software, right? Yes. And it's a challenge, right? We have so many challenges. It's difficult to select the proper test cases. It's difficult to understand if we are good enough or not, if we are ready or not. And today's talk is going to be about this, how to solve this problem. I'm going to present you uh, an experience report. So I'm going to talk about specifics, how we solved a certain problem. And let's talk about the topic. So as you probably understood, we produce a massive amount of information, right? We had been like uh, 650 people, so we stored requirements in a requirement management tool. We wrote test cases stored in a test case management system, test logs, test execution results. So we have a huge amount of information. So my idea was, let's apply data analytics on it and try to deal with these challenges of complexities, these enormous complexities. So if you look at the picture, what can you see? Uh, zeros and ones. If, except, unless if you are a genius, I know you are, so it's not a question, you would know it's uh, Madonna in JPEG format, right? But you don't know, so let's use a different representation, a table format. Now you can see it's actually bugging flow on a weekly basis. But this format is still difficult to consume for a human being, for a human eye, so let's switch to a trend line. Now we can, we can see something. From week 14 to 15, we have a significant increase in bugging flow. Can we draw any conclusion? I assume no, nothing. Except we have 224 uh, bug on week 15. That's it. And if you have a decent tool, a good one we had, it's called EasyBI, you can play around with this data and, get, and figure out what's wrong. So I added another data source. It's test effort spent on software testing. And what we can see is we can't see anything because there's no correlation between test effort spent on software testing and the issues found during software testing. Because the test effort is rather constant while we start finding issues from week 15, right? So let's play with this a little bit more at test effectiveness, what we did. Actually, it's a scenario we played with uh, once a couple of years ago. Now we have C, test effectiveness, which is a measure of how good, how effective you are in testing, practically a measure of the number of issues you find versus the total number of issues. So 100% means you find all the bugs, zero, practically you find no bugs, but the customer finds them. And in, case, uh, in this case, you can see the effectiveness dropped to 5% from week 15. So now we understand that we have an issue because the customer probably started to find issues, started heavy testing, and it's not us who started to improve software testing, right? Why is that good? Because you may say, OK, but we have built-in reports in different tools like test management tools, requirement management tools, and stuff like that. Yeah, uh, it has an additional uh, advantage over those, because obviously we start with defining or aspects here we would like to investigate. Then if you define these uh, metrics and definitions, this system continuously evaluates this data and present it to you on a dashboard. Furthermore, it's good to investigate what's wrong, because sometimes if you have a measurement, a metric displayed, a dashboard, you still don't know what's wrong, right? You still need to investigate it. But if you, if you have such tool like we had, EasyBI, you can, by a click of a button, you can change between representations, add some more data sources, so you can easily support the analysis process as well. So that's why it's better. It's not a static thing like most reports in uh, test management tools or requirement management tools. So 
let me tell you our story, how it started. When I joined NNG, uh, it looked like this. You know, we had quality issues, and it led to internal fights. Luckily, no one died. A couple of people left the company, but uh, we had some casualties. Lots of pointi uh, pointing at each other. You know, no one wanted to take the blame, take the responsibility, whose fault. And if you don't have fact data to support your uh, reasoning, you can hardly convince uh, other people and hardly re resolve issues and conflicts within the company. And practically, you can't solve problems, can't improve. So uh, what we did, we started to think about, OK, let's define a couple of aspects we would like to investigate. I call them metrics, but let's say these are aspects we would like to uh, investigate our software engineering uh, processes. We came up with six because we wanted to uh, start with a small set because we knew this whole idea needed to be piloted first because we expected some issues, even with the process itself. So we come up with these six test effectiveness, which, which I've already explained, efficiency. We wanted to know at what cost we find those number of issues in the software. It's important. It's not the same spending 1,000 hours and finding 10 bucks or spending 10 hours and finding the same 10 bucks, right? Effort spent per time. It's practically we wanted to know uh, when we find uh, those issues, when we do intense testing. Just at the end, right before the release, or we do continuous uh, intense testing. And we assumed we do continuous testing and we were a large organization, and our assumption wasn't right. It turned out that we, most of the time, do late testing. Then we defined uh, a couple of more metrics, effort distribution. We wanted to know what the tester does. Do bug fix testing, do bug reproduction, do release-related activities, do some administration stuff, or uh, testing new uh, features. Guess what? What were they, uh, they uh, dealing with most of the time? Bug fix, reproduction, and retesting. No, almost no new future testing. Then we had this resol resolution quality metric, which was pretty good because we wanted to understand you know, how good we are fixing bugs. How, mu how much percentage of our bug fixes are rejected later? Then we also wanted to know ticket quality, because we wanted to understand if we have a good enough quality, enough details in the tickets, because we had a large organization, several sites, 1,000 people involved. So we wanted to avoid unnecessary emails and phone calls all the time. So that was the starting point, or aspects to investigate how good we are in software engineering. So the next step was practically to find a tool. And as we wanted to work on data, mainly in Jira, so we picked EasyBI. I'm going to talk about it a little bit later. So what we did, we set up the environment, the infrastructure. Then we started to collect data and started to evaluate the data. And you know, we were smart guys, so we were quite sure that we are right. All we need just supporting data, you know, just confirm our assumptions. But guess what happened? I don't know how many of you know the Apollo mission. Almost failed, almost a couple of people died. They just launched the rocket, and immediately several alarms displayed on the screen, and, and they called the Mission Control Center. Houston, we got a problem. Houston, we got a problem. And uh, actually, we had the same feeling, because uh, you know what we wanted? Just confirm our assumptions. And that's it. But indeed, uh, we had uh, crap data in the system. So we had lots of data, several millions of record, but crap. So practically useless, you, so you can't really do any decision-making based on this. People forget to insert data. Sometimes they uh, insert it uh, inconsistently. This value, that value, or didn't even insert any data. And different teams also use different kind of values for the same purpose, which made it difficult to compare teams where we have issues, where we have common patterns, right? So our first lessons learned after one year of uh, experimenting was that we have a, a, a huge amount of crap data we can't really do anything with. So uh, the next step was, I think, uh, pretty straightforward. Uh, we had to consider the, the data, so make sure we have a good enough data. Uh, we change processes. We make sure people really take care of the data, so we have a good enough quality data in the system. We also made sure that we uh, consolidate ways of working so we can compare teams or even organizational units, because it's important. 
Polaral, obviously, as we progressed, uh, we made some other improvement, added more metrics, and did some performance fine-tuning. Uh, fine I'm, I'm going to come back to this, but let's focus on the first point. So, now we tell it we have good enough data. So we wanted to confirm the initial assumptions again. Guess what happened? Uh, still no success, I can tell you. So, I don't know if you remember the movie, Alien? when Sigourney Weaver first meet the alien, and you know, at that point, she doesn't know how, how this encounter is going to end up, right? Luckily, she doesn't die, so the movie carries on. And uh, we had similar feelings. What a fuck, again, because you know, we already spent more than, uh, more than a year. Our initial assumptions uh, were that we are going to succeed within a couple of months, and we can prove our, uh, our assumptions, and we are done. Our main assumption was that uh, the bad guys are the ones working on the core product, you know. It's easy to blame the other. Uh, they make the most bucks. But it turned out after doing this analytics that they only produce 20% of the bucks. Making further analysis, we realized that, but the resolution time is three times longer. So that caused the false assumption. And just imagine if you have such false assumptions, biases, how the hell you can improve, how, to, how the hell you can be successful as a software tester, as a software engineer. I think there's no way. We also thought uh, we do continuous testing, turned out to be false assumption as well, so we had a couple of those. Done. We started to produce results, and management team uh, welcomed the effort, and they said, okay, good, cool, then now we can use this uh, infrastructure to point out whose fault is the bad quality. And they wanted to use this information for salary reviews and things like that, and it took some time to uh, get rid of that KPI mindset uh, metric, because uh, at that point what he had was a set of indicators which usually indicated something to be investigated. So they wanted some sort of automatic decision-making, which wasn't possible at that point. But luckily, we convinced them that forget about this, don't punish people based on these statistics, and don't base your salary increase on these metrics. I think it's a very important part of uh, doing these data analytics, because uh, one of the reasons why people didn't uh, cooperate with us to fill in the right data, to take care of having a clean data in the system, because they see no reason. They store the information occasionally because they see no reason. No one told them uh, why we need that information. So I will highly recommend you to make sure they know why we do that and uh, use that information. Otherwise, this whole initiative is going to be doomed pretty soon, so, and you, are, you don't want to do that. It's all about trust a system is working, like this. And you have a couple of uh, use cases, uh, scenarios to use data analytics in software engineering, so not purely uh, for test management purposes. Uh, you can use it, obviously, to support uh, test management, uh, risk management, decision making, uh, estimation, doing better estimation, doing better testing, like highlighting error-prone areas or identifying different trends. Or you can use this information pro for process improvement. Uh, due to the quite limited time today we have, I decided to focus on this specific uh, scenario, so how we use this information, the data analytics produced for process improvement. So as I said, we needed a goal, and we need, had to use that information for something, right? If people don't see a result coming out of this, they would just say, hey, dude, it's just another try. <laughs> We don't cooperate, and that's it. So we set up a CPI framework, which meant to have a, have a team of people who drove this activity. We sit down each and every quarter, went through all this information, data. We even talked it, talked it through with people, because we wanted to understand. It wasn't an automatic system to make decisions or draw a conclusion. So we set actions, and we even followed it up. And people started to understand, yeah, it's a good thing, because people started to change, you know, things started to change. We started to have a better understanding, and we even were able to pinpoint trends and uh, bad patterns in the organization. I think it was very useful and a, and a really good lesson learned. As I promised you, um, I'm not only going to talk about theory, but I'm going to talk about a specific case, how we introduced it, what challenges we had, and what tools we used. 
You don't have to take a picture. I'm going to release a, a paper, a five-page paper, five paper, so you can download it from the conference website. Uh, let me summarize what we had. So we had EasyBI. I think for all those who use Jira, it's quite straightforward uh, decision to use it. It's quite cheap, and if you mainly work on bug tickets and issues, uh, it has tons of uh, built-in predefined metrics, so you don't, don't even have to script or write any kind of query. But it also has the opportunity to write new queries to define more complex metrics if you wish, obviously. Uh, luckily, it has a great customer support. So they are very responsive. You send them a, uh, a faulty query, they send, uh, send you back the reviewed and corrected query uh, in a couple of days. So I think it's pretty good. Obviously, it has some uh, cons as well, like performance. After a couple of years in years, we started to see some uh, performance drop started to work on larger, larger data sets, and also started to define more complex metrics, so the system slowed down. And actually, that was the point when we were uh, thinking about to move on to uh, another tool, which uh, didn't happen so far. And one cool thing is this. Even though its name suggests it's easy BI for Jira, you can work on different kind of data, like REST API, MySQL stuff. So practically, you can connect to any kind of tool uh, in use currently, because in most cases, uh, you have a single database in the back end of a requirement management tool, a test management tool, so you can easily connect and just uh, import the data and start working on it. I think it's a pretty cool thing. And you may assume uh, that uh, you know, we are here, but after uh, talking about so many failures, of ours, you can guess so we are not uh, sitting like this, enjoying the view and having a, uh, a cold beer, but we keep on doing what we did. Uh, we're thinking about how to move to the data warehouse, how to replace the tool with a better one. So uh, still there's a lot to do, and obviously, as Tariq presented, we have uh, lots of other ways to uh, support and deal with these uh, complexities like AI, machine learning, so data analytics is not, uh, not the only option. So, uh, let's wrap it up. So, what we discussed, how to apply data analytics to support software engineering, not specifically software testing. Uh, we talked about a specific uh, use case, an experience report of ours. We had issues with the data quality, and probably you will have also, I think. That's, a, that's, a, that's, a, that's quite a big deal to clean up the data and make sure uh, you keep it clean. I think it's one of the greatest challenges you are going to face with. Then, um, obviously, tool may be uh, a bottleneck, but as, as we could live with it for a couple of years, probably it's going to be okay for you. And uh, make sure people understand why you do it and use the information for decision making, from uh, test management to support, for testing support, because I think it's pretty important. And if you decide to go on this journey and come with me and come with many people like Geoff, Tariq, and a lot of other uh, speakers, I think you are going to experience uh, continuous learning, confirming your assumptions, and getting rid of, rid of your false assumptions. It's going to be like that uh, the first human being had. You know, first we only knew the close uh, neighborhood. Then we understood it's a lot bigger. At, so, at some point, we thought it's flat, you know, you know, and if you walk far enough, you can just fall off. But it's not true. Some people think uh, a, a huge, a large turtle holds the, uh, carries the Earth, but it's not the case, obviously. Then we learned uh, we have a moon, we call it moon, and some people know it has a dark side, and, and, and even some people think uh, there are aliens on the dark side of the moon, which is not the case. So my final take for you is, uh, I think data analytics is, is not only an option but probably a kind of must for you to survive and uh, cope with these complexity challenges you have. Thank you for your attention, for your time, and you can get in touch with me uh, using my email, on my webpage, Twitter, and LinkedIn. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, do you have any questions, or can we see the slide, please? Okay. Do you have any connection to NASA, T-shirt, Apollo mission, and so on? No, no, not at all. I just thought it's a good fit to my presentation. I had connection to other troubles last year. I mentioned that we shut down a couple of uh, telephone exchanges, which costed uh, 25,000 US dollars per minute per exchange. But uh, no connection to this. So 
I can say I'm not connected to all disasters. <laughs> okay. Which was the biggest success you reached with this metric-driven technique? I think uh, the biggest advantage uh, was to learn what we do, because uh, I think we all have biases. And based on that, you can hardly uh, evolve. I think we learned that we usually do uh, late testing. You know, you are sitting in a team. You have a set of teams living, sitting in other departments, other sites, and you assume we all work like that. But how do you know? So I, I think the really big lessons learned was we understood how we work compared to how we're supposed to work, and we were able to identify the issues like we, we do late testing, we do have the most of the box in the custom part, but we do have the, the worst resolution time in the core product. And also, uh, we could easily identify test effect in West drop before customer started to explain, um, complain. Sorry. The next one is, is pretty interesting. How much extra work was needed from the testers to fill in everything in proper format for the data analytics? Uh, nothing at all. Practically, it was partly processed and badly configured tools, so it wasn't really an extra effort. So uh, the basic idea of this, you shouldn't uh, add more manual work to do by people. So it wasn't that idea. We forget to uh, set some constraints on specific fields and, and stuff like that. So it was more of a process, a tool configuration uh, issue. Not really. Because uh, if you have those constraints or help hints uh, on the input field, uh, you can get, it, get rid of these issues. Okay. What do you think? What are the three most important metrics and why? Um, actually, this uh, six was driven by our uh, focus areas. So I'm not saying these, these are the most important. At that point, we had some pain points in the organization. So uh, the initial set was uh, defined based on those previous knowledge. We knew we have issues with the uh, uh, core product box. And we knew we had issues with test effectiveness. We assumed we have issues with uh, late intense testing. We knew uh, probably we mostly do bug fix testing. So we had some previous knowledge. Uh, they turn out to be pretty useful, but obviously your organization uh, may have other pain points, so uh, I wouldn't say uh, you should use this. Okay, next one. What was, what the system, was the system regularly used only by management and architects, or was it used more widespread in the organization? If uh, yes, what were the key use cases for testers? Actually, uh, all the people started to use it because testers wanted to see the trends. If you are doing good enough testing, who finds the fault? Uh, we also used uh, heat maps to identify error-prone areas which supported uh, selecting the proper test cases. So all people used it. Uh, mainly not upper management because we said, uh, uh, let's use uh, technical people are supposed to use it because mainly it's a valid information for them. We asked the higher upper management not to draw any conclusion because it's too technical. You know, they saw a trend, yeah, it's going down. Done. But uh, you know, sometimes it's good, sometimes it's bad. So we said only tech people uh, watch this. We had like uh, almost 200 uh, um, uh, different displays, different charts, and uh, yeah, testers used it on a daily basis. They wanted to understand if you have a good trend, if you are finding more bugs, what are the critical areas to test, and uh, if you have problem with the resolution time. So they continuously used it. I think it was a pretty uh, useful thing because you quickly got the feedback and knew we have a problem before you hit the wall. I think that's the important thing. You don't want to hit, hit the wall. Okay, I think we have time for a very last question. Who are the users of your tools and how do they use it? Uh, I think I explained it, right? Because I told everybody, so mainly product managers, testers, developers, uh, technical leaders. But anyway, anyway we had uh, charts for manage, man, management team, but mostly uh, they were uh, rather technical. What we did, uh, we created uh, reports manually to management, kind of management executive summaries to explain this number is good, this trend is good. Because, you know, sometimes it's not so easy uh, to say it's good or bad, like cyclomatic complexity, what's good? 6, 10, 12, <laughs> you know, so it's better not to hand, it, hand this data over to management team without any uh, explanation. Or I wouldn't even hand it over, uh, let's be frank. Okay. You know what, I really envy you because you got some proper question. I was only getting the one I was like, what the hell is Spider-Man doing in the Justice League, yeah? <laughs> <laughs> so, lucky you. <laughs> 
Thank you very much. You can find Attila probably around. Uh, yeah. Please remember to vote, to give he feedback for Attila. And thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen. Attila Fekete. <laughs> <laughs>